Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, celebrating with you the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment at the outset of Mass to think about our lives and to confess our sins. We're called on by the readings today to be watchful and to warn people when danger is approaching. For the times we have remained silent instead of speaking our truth, Lord, have mercy. We're called on, too, to be instruments of God's love for the times we fail to love as we should, especially in our families. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we mean to do but don't, all those good intentions unrealized, the sins of omission, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks to your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we may realize the freedom God has given us in making us his sons and his daughters. God our Father, you redeem us, and you make us your children in Jesus Christ. Look upon us and teach us how to enjoy true freedom, a freedom live with responsibility and bring us one day to the inheritance you promise in heaven. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me saying anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O oh, wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt. But you shall save yourself the word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, hide I not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, hide I not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, God, I not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Mazah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harder not your hearts. The second reading, 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Thank you so much for joining us on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Very powerful readings that apply so deeply to your life and mine. Let's go first of all to the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel. I don't know if you think of yourself this way, but Ezekiel the prophet is saying it is the job of believers to be watchmen. What does that mean? To be watchmen, to be watchwomen. Our job is to observe. That's part of our vocation. And then when we see danger, when we see sin, when we see people we love heading into trouble, our job is to be watching and then warning people to let them know. And I know for a lot of us, we think to ourselves, well, if I get into this topic or that, uh, people in my family may not want to listen to me. They may not feel I have a right to say what I want to say. Who am I to judge kind of thing? But it is our job to evaluate. It's our job to be watchful for the sake of the safety of people we love and then to warn them and to let them know there's danger ahead and here's how I see it. They may listen or not, but the important thing is that you know in your heart, in your conscience, that you didn't keep silent in the face of danger or sinful things. You know, how many years have I been doing this? Probably since I was in my 20s where I talk about the sacredness of human life, whether I'm talking about the death penalty or abortion or any life issue. I know most people in the congregation, most people sitting in front of me, don't want to hear that issue again. Life, life, life. But as long as we live in a culture that continues to compromise human life, as long as human life is every day degraded all around us, It's our job, not just as a priest, but as a parent, as a teacher, as a friend, to say life is sacred. And because life is sacred, we've got to work avidly to to protect it. And silence in the face of what's evil around us doesn't help. Or even something as, as uncomfortable for parents as talking about sex with their kids. You know, we've come to an age where parents don't talk about it at all. Or if they do, they simply give them a warning about using protection. Instead of talking openly, about the fact that, hey, 
we are not against sex. The church thinks sex is a gift from God, but that it's meant to be shared in the right time and the right place with the right person. And that if you don't want your heart and sometimes your body broken by the experience of sex when you shouldn't be having it, then someone's got to warn you that sex is beautiful, but be careful with it. Don't give this precious part of yourself to just anyone. And don't think this is just like a handshake, because it's not. It's a deep sharing of intimacy of something beautiful, something that should be shared with someone who deserves it, namely someone who has made a true lifelong commitment to you. When I hear that we live in an age where people really believe that you can have sex without consequences, I know from pastoral counseling that's not true, that people have their hearts and their souls broken when they too often share something that the other person was not worthy of. They share a deep and profound part of themselves with someone they should not have. Well, whose job is it to say, hey, I'm not just going to tell you to be careful and don't get pregnant. I'm going to tell you more importantly, I think sex is beautiful. I think it's a gift from God. But it's so precious that it's meant to be shared carefully. How much have you thought through what you're about to share with someone else? That's our job, to be watchmen and watchwomen and speak our truth. Whenever we see something that's unjust, we see something that's frightening or going to lead to sin. How many times have we had to say to someone in our lives, you know, I'm not happy with the drugs you're taking, with the, the alcohol you're drinking. You know, I'm happy to see that more kids than ever before now are at least mindful of the fact that you shouldn't drink and drive. But in my time growing up, it was just expected that people have drinks and then get behind the wheel of a car and horrible, horrible things happen. But I would think after every accident or where someone was injured or killed, I wonder how many friends or family along the way bothered to say, you've got a problem if you're drinking and driving. Or even in our own families, when we see people who are still battling with addictions of all kinds, and sometimes there's that feeling, just leave it alone. Maybe it'll go away on its own. It won't. Our job is to be watchmen, to speak our truth. And yes, that's never going to be an easy thing to do, but we're called on to do it by God himself through the prophet Ezekiel. You know, long before 9-11 made popular in our culture that idea, which you see everywhere if you go to a major city, if you see something, say something, Ezekiel had the idea first. If you see something, say something. Be a watchman, be a watchwoman. And in doing that, help the people you love to avoid danger and sin and devastation in their life because no one ever told me to be careful. Your job and mine is to say whether they want to hear it or not, this is the truth, and I'm speaking it to you because I love you. Let's go to that second reading, St. Paul to the Romans. Essentially, he's saying if you love someone, you don't sin against them. You know, uh, it's an interesting thing. I, I, I do so many weddings, right? And, and I'll listen to the essays they write about each other and how many times they use the word love, love, love. I love you forever. I love you unconditionally. I love you to the end of time. That's beautiful. But living love and talking love are entirely two different things. And what St. Paul is saying is if you really love people, you don't sin against them. So, for example, I had one wedding one time where uh, while they were engaged and while they were planning this great wedding, he was involved with someone who was not going to be his wife. Well, he obviously then really didn't love the girl he was engaged to, did he? He may have said he did. He may have used the word love often, but it didn't mean anything. Not if he could at the same time that he was going to marry this woman, be involved with someone who he had no intention of marrying, someone on the side. That may sound unusual, but it's not. If it's true, as the statisticians say, that 40% of people in marriage are somehow or another unfaithful, you got to know. If you love somebody, do you sin against them? And if you're sinning against your husband, your wife, the person you committed to, then you clearly don't really love them. And I, I've had cases over my 42 years of priesthood where someone said, well, no, 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 I, I love my wife. You know, she's my wife. She's the mother of my children. But, you know, I'm not as in love as I once was. So that gives me carte blanche or green light to go fool around the side. No, it doesn't. Love demands faithfulness. That's what you committed to. That's what you said before God and the people of faith. And so our job, and it's not easy, is to say when I say I love someone, I also will not sin against you. Let me take it to another level. If you're an employer, you know you have so many opportunities if you want to, to cheat the people that work for you. You can be an unjust employer. You can worry more about your profit line than you do about the guy who's trying to make a living, trying to support his family, barely getting by, who works for you. You've got to decide. 
We live in a culture that still says that women for the same job as men are not getting paid the same salary. That's unjust. So if you employ a woman and you know I'm going to pay her less than I would a guy because she's a woman, that's unjust. You may say, I love all my employees. How much do you love them if you're not going to be fair when it comes to paying them justly? If you love someone, St. Paul says, you don't sin against them. Injustice is a way of sinning against people as well. Maybe one more example if I can, and uh, it's a controversial topic now, but I'm hearing more and more Americans, because we have no patience when it comes to these things, saying, you know, like the fight in Ukraine is not my fight. And so we Americans shouldn't get involved in that. We should pull out of there and not send over the help that we've been sending over. If we had a tyrant living next door to America who was regularly slaughtering children, women, innocent people, bombing hospitals, genocide against our people. Wouldn't you want somebody else in the world to care about that? Well, now the people in Ukraine are in the exact same circumstance. They didn't ask for this war. They don't want it to go on forever. But their men, women, and children are being slaughtered by an evil force. We can say, well, it's not my fight. Does that mean because you don't live in Ukraine, you don't care about humanity? If I say I love the children of God, I love people, I love humanity, but I'm not going to purposely care for a particular people who are being oppressed and wiped out by an evil force, then how much do I really love? I love humanity. I love people. Human beings are great, but I don't want to get involved in trying to protect them when innocent people are being destroyed. St. Paul has got a, a very strong challenge to us. If you say you love people, that means you don't sin against them. And it also means you don't ignore their plight. And it also means you do what you can to protect them. It, it's not easy. It's not easy to be faithful in marriage forever. It's not easy to be a truly just employer who never cheats employees. And it's certainly not easy to be involved around the world in situations where innocent people are being slaughtered. How much easier it is to be someone who says, I'm going to be concerned about my world, my country, and not care about others. Can you imagine if the world said that about us in America? As we were attacked, wouldn't you want people to care? Wouldn't you want people to stop others who are sinning against us? It is our job, St. Paul says, to put love into action by being just and fair, faithful, good, and involved. Finally, let's go to this gospel, the gospel of St. Matthew. There's a couple of things I wanted to focus on. First is, how do you solve your problems? You know, I, I heard a case recently where uh, a deacon made a mistake, and, uh, and so the priest who observed it immediately wrote to the bishop to say, this deacon made a mistake. And all I could think of was, boy, I sure hope that priest first called the deacon into his office and said, let's talk about what I saw today. It wasn't good. But if all he did was go to the boss and report the deacon, I guess maybe the priest didn't read this passage, huh? Because Jesus is saying the first obligation we have when we have a problem with someone is to talk to them, not about them, not to someone else who's above them, not to triangulate, complaining to everyone else but the person we have the problem with, but rather to deal with them directly. And it, I know it's not easy. Look, we all like to go around the problem instead of confronting it. But Jesus says the way to deal with your brother when you two have a problem is to talk to him. And then he says, look, if he won't listen, he blows you off, then you have other alternatives. But at least start by dealing one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a bigger problem than we may realize. There are lots of people out there who would say, well, it's so much easier to talk about someone than to talk with them. Jesus sees it differently. If you have a problem with someone, you go to them, you try to work it out. So that's the first challenge. If you have people you're not getting along with, are you talking to everybody except for the person involved? Jesus says, deal with them first. They may not accept what you say. They may walk away. They may turn their back on you. But Jesus says the right thing to do is to deal with the person with whom we have a problem. And then the second thing I wanted to focus on, I run into a lot of people, and I'll say to people regularly, you go to church? Well, I mean, I pray. That's not what I asked you. Do you go to church? And you know my point of view, there's 168 hours in every week. How about it? How about we give one hour to the Lord at least by going to Mass? Well, my, my prayer life, my spiritual life is kind of private. It's just me and God. Okay. Jesus humbly disagrees with your approach. He says to us today in this reading, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I. When two or three gather in prayer, it is a more powerful prayer, a more meaningful prayer, 
and we're supposed to pray with others. You know what I love about the 1030 Mass on Sunday is that when I walk into church, there's six or 700 people who share my faith, who share my struggle to believe, who are on the same team with me. We're in it together. We pray together. And maybe the power of our prayer together will have its effect. In the same way, a Mass like this, where thousands of you have prayed with us over the years at Our Lady of Lourdes, there's a power in our shared experience of prayer. And people say, well, I don't need to. I can just talk to God directly. Well, sure, do that too. But don't be afraid to recognize there is a unique giftedness to praying with other people, other people who share your faith, other people who are struggling just like you. I love the fact that when we come together for Mass, we're surrounded by people who in a world that rejects so much of the values of Jesus Christ come together because they don't reject those values and they want to share those values and they're trying to live those values. Isn't it great to have friends around you who you pray with? And God is saying in the person of Jesus, when we pray together, there is a power to that prayer that cannot be minimized. So say all the private prayers you want, but make that one hour a week to pray with and for other people. And you will find a power in that prayer when we're together that is unlike any singular prayer we may make. Give it a try. Let's invite people who've been away from the church for a long time to think again about coming home. Okay, picture time for me. Let me show you a picture. You may not recognize the characters, but I'll explain them. When in 1996 I became a pastor for the first time, it was a parish called St. Thomas the Apostle in West Hempstead, which was very cool because it was the parish I was raised in and right across the street from the rectory where my parents were living there. But I was also given these two priests when I first got there. They were my associate pastors. Uh, on this side is a guy named Andrzej. He came from Poland and he was ordained for our diocese, young, dynamic, amazing, brilliant guy. And then there's this other guy here, Father Brian. Father Brian, again, a young man who could relate to young people in a wonderful way. It was an amazing house to live in, an amazing group of priests. Okay, why do I mention this to you? Um, this week, at least in our diocese, we get all these mailings about supporting the residents for senior priests. Because at this point, we have probably way more senior priests than we have young priests. And a house like this, where you had Brian in his 30s, me probably in my 40s, Anjay probably in his 30s as well, those kind of houses probably don't exist too much anymore. We're an aging priestly population. So what does that say? A couple of things. First of all, appreciate the priests that you have and let them know that. Secondly, please pray constantly for an increase in vocations that we'll have more opportunities like this to have people who can relate to other people in abundance and not be finding ourselves limited. And look, I know one of the great complaints about our church right now in America is because of diminishing vocations, we've turned to people and priests from other countries. Instead of complaining about a slight accent, be grateful that these guys have left their homeland to help save our church in America. I have had the privilege of, of living with priests from India, the Philippines, from, uh, from Ghana, from, uh, from all sorts of places, including Nigeria, some of the best guys in the world. And we could not, we could not sustain the church without their generosity. So whoever your priests may be, love them, affirm them, encourage them, and pray for more, especially in our own Western culture, where so few people are choosing to be priests. I will be forever grateful for Brian and Andre and the yes they gave to God's invitation to be their priest. And they continue to be wonderful, wonderful priests for the church. And we need more of them. Pray for that. As a people of faith, why don't we join now in praying together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now trusting in the mercy of God and knowing that he always hears us and in his way responds, we offer our prayers and petition. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope, bishops, and all church leaders will continually seek God's wisdom and guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That world leaders will model the mercy of God in their treatment of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who work, that they may see their labor as a way of becoming like God, the creator of all things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially baby Mia Skatz, Patricia Valdaro, Deacon Phil Mills, Myreen Burleson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, especially Anthony Valentine, Peter C. Picon, Ernest Hoffman, Joseph Glibwa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Arthur Hallen, intention of Joe and Mary Monaco, St. Joseph Book of Remembrance, Mary Rothschild, Michael Farah, Caligaro DeMarco, Betty DeTori, Donald and Helen Brzezinski, Phyllis Petrowski, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to add a few intentions if I can. Among those who are sick, I pray for Annette Romance, Deacon Tom Rich, a baby Oakley, Justin Doherty. I pray for Mary and Pat Sears, Dario Rivera, Anthony Posterino, Carol Paolo Ashandi. I pray for Paratine family, for Angelo and Al Clemente, Leanne Lasanti, Katie O'Connor, for Judy Alaco. I pray too for all prisoners of conscience, especially Jimmy Lay in Hong Kong prison. Pray for Larry Lewis, for Millie Paradiso, for Patricia Stewart, Ursula Vobis, Connie Vanas, Maria Cariola, and members of the McShea family. I pray too for uh, uh, Judge Tony Falanga. I want to pray too for uh, Joanne Cavaccini. I pray for um, Tim Moore, Kimberly Cusack, Christine Bauman, Michael Chanover, Jeanette Chanover Davidson, Carol Silva, Nelwyn Randisi, Joe Falgiano, Anthony Kremi, Kathy Bordengo, Nancy Doherty, Tom Miller. I pray as well for Ginny Rivera, as well as Courtney Genovese. Let me pray for Jose E. Senna and Jimmy Collins, for Anthony Kremi, as well as Elaine Sedita. I had a chance to talk to Elaine this week. Elaine, praying up a storm for you. Pray as well for Teresa Leo Fisher, for Larry Meyer, for Joseph Grafeo, for Vilio Bronzini and Andy Stefano, for Courtney Desjardins, for Tommy Swingross, Mary and Ken Johnson and family, for Patrick Cuccius and Elizabeth Carter. I want to pray for all those two who are suffering from mental illness of any kind and for the consolation of their families who care for them as well. Let me pray too for Martin Soval, for Sam and Beverly Maggio, for Janet Chevelle, for Russell Castro Giovanni, for uh, uh, retired Major Resti Malari. I want to pray for Michelle Spinelli, for Ray McGrath, Brian and Kathy Rogers. Uh, Dominic's going through some heavy grieving and he needs our consolation and prayers. Also want to pray for all the family members of Ann Scott. So those are among the sick. And then among those who have died, let me mention several. I pray for Robert J. McCarthy and Joan Kretz for uh, Rosalie Salco, Sophia Maglione, Phyllis Petrowski, Kenneth and Marie Taylor, Judge Don Belfi, Nicholas Marini, Thomas Peter Lopresti, Pat Sestar, Jean-Claude Linnae, for Paul Romeo, for Ed Reitz, Judy Famono, uh, Mary Coyne, John Coyne, Doug Julik. I pray for Chris and Marion O'Brien, for Dennis Francis Cooney, Stanley Krupski. 
Let me pray too for uh, Dominic Macchio and for uh, Corinne Cavacciolo. I want to pray for my mom and dad, Nicola and Cecilia. Pray for Luigi Antoni Rosmini, for Gemma Stumper Rosmini, for Mike Goff. I pray too for Steve O'Mara, for Regina Brighton, Cardinal George Pell, John Slade. Pray for Kristen Sedita Duggan, for Tom O'Sullivan, Bessie and TC Center, all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, Bartolomeo Beni, for Guy Gaetano, uh, Sal Salvatore and Angelo Emlo, Anna and Gary Gomes, Albert Cavelli, Paul Struzzieri, Emilio Alaca. I pray too for Thomas Di Crescenzo, Helen, Luke, and John Marr, for Pat and George Layton, for Betty Ammon, as well as Ursula Jack and Paul Cronin, for Kay and Mike Lynch, Doris and Hank Erickson. Among those, who, among those who have died, I also remember Jack Carroll and Dave Robin for Christina Formato. I pray for Marion O'Brien, Billy and Michael Sarasoli and their dad, Billy. Pray for Mary and Joseph William, William Kathy Orofino, Margaret O'Connell Lasanti, for Kenny Bolando, John, Maureen, Ann, Ed, and Mary Raber, Monica and Ray Carrison, Richard Rosmarin. Pray for, uh, I don't think I got Peter Raber in there. Let me mention him too. Uh, Jimmy Soldo for Carmela Labolita, Cynthia Prague, Elaine Tiso, Matthew Toriello, Joseph Sardone, and Bessie Sena. Pray for Bill Kelly, Isabella Glauda, Danny Carlson. I pray for Pauline, Irene, and Tom Romano, Ed June, and Eddie Jandovitz, Father Don Babinski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton. I pray for Marisa Colo, for Terry Moran, and for Anthony Cipriano. For Gerard Granito, Marie and Albert Cavelli, uh, Peggy and Richard DeMarco, Corinne Locke, pray for Steve Haller and Melissa Bergman, Nick Martone and John Bonifacio, Jerry Monk, Jimmy Collins, Jean and Nicholas Delario, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Nancy Palumbo, Kathy Cheney, John Slate, Helen Kiddash, Richard Maglione, as well as Al Menendez. I want to pray for William, William Anthony Bruweiler, for Teresa D. Palmo, also known as Tessie, I pray for Annette Salintro, for Charles McLaughlin, for Jean Hersick, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Marion Donato Forlenza, Nicole Toussaint. I pray for Nana Scaglione, for Emily Lafaso, for Michael Bergman and Bridget Clementi, for Ray Anzalone and Brian Hussey, Suzanne Scanio and Susan Mulligan. Pray for Betty Moore and Bridget Clementi, for Tom O'Sullivan, Father Don Babinski. I pray as well for Jenna Tuller, for Bob Mason, Randy Mason's brother. Pray for Catherine and William Donovan. I pray for Elizabeth Beth M. Kelly, as well as Judith Crum. Judith went home to God this week. We had just talked last week about letting go of life and she was ready to meet God and go to heaven. So Judith, we pray you into heaven. I'd like to add a few intentions if I can to the ones that I've already mentioned. I wanna pray for Vincent George Tambone. Vincent passed away one year ago his family has been in church this past week. Remembering him with great love, we pray for Vincent. I also want to pray as well for James Raniolo, young man who passed away last week. I want to pray too for my friend Elaine Sedita, a life force, a woman of great love and goodness who uh, has now just entered hospice uh, and has touched so many lives. So Elaine, we're praying with you. Uh, I know this is a tough time for you and for your family. You have accomplished so much good in your life and we are with you in prayer and in love. I want to pray as well for uh, Joe Cooney, Sr. Uh, Joe formed a great family that has touched our parish in so many ways, many children, uh, and he has taught them well. He has shared with them the faith in a beautiful way. I had the privilege of visiting Joe last week, and this morning Joe went home to God. So Joe Cooney, Sr., we pray for you and the legacy you left behind with your beautiful family. We'll be celebrating his mass this coming week. Of course, I pray for Judy Kuhn, uh, whose memorial service up in Vermont is being held this coming week. I want to pray as well, if I can, for uh, uh, Christina Formato on the anniversary of her passage into heaven. I want to pray, too, for Valerie and for Jude, two people who are having surgery and have asked for their prayer, for prayers. I want to pray for all those who are suffering of addictions of any kind, whether it be gambling or alcohol or drugs. As I mentioned in the homily, I want to pray for an increase in vocations to priesthood, to religious life, and to the many lay ministries of our church. I want to pray for your special intentions in mind. Always I'm remembering with love my mom and dad, Cecilia and Nicholas. I pray for your parents as well and grandparents. 
that those who have passed will be happily enjoying eternal life in heaven. Uh, we pray as well for our friends in Ukraine and our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong, wherever freedom is opposed by evil, to stand tall with them to make a difference for the good. I pray for our police and firefighters and EMTs, our doctors, our nurses. I'm conscious of the fact that COVID is back again this season. I thank God for our doctors and nurses and orderlies. I thank too our men and women in the armed forces and their readiness to stand tall for the freedom of people like you and me. So for all these intentions, let's join together in praying to the mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Later today, I'll be doing a Mass for my friend Bridget Clementi, who passed away, and I ask for your prayers for the consolation of her family as well. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. God of peace, God of love, God of mercy, may our offering bring you true worship and may it make us one with you now and always. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. He is the word through whom you made the universe. He's the savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. So now, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we proclaim your glory as together we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted out of love for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends and said, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood 
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving chalice. We thank you for counting us as worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we might all be united as one family by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. We ask you to bless and remember all of our brothers and sisters who've gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and martyrs and angels who've done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Who of us doesn't know somebody in our family or a good friend who long ago gave up on going to church? gave up on God. They find a million reasons to not come. We want them home. We love them. They're part of the family. So as we say the Lord's Prayer, let's pray for that, that God in his wisdom will gently, softly, wonderfully invite our family and friends who are parted from the church to come on home to try once again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Not too many announcements this week. One I would mention is when I said to you before that uh, Joe Cooney Sr. had passed away. Uh, he had a great family, but one of the people most of you know is uh, Andy Cooney, who of course is the great Irish singer who's traveled the world sharing his music. So to Andy and to the whole family, a beautiful family, our condolences. These are uh, parishioners who've been deeply, wonderfully involved in our parish. And I ask for your prayers for Joe, the founder of the family, a great man many years as a New York City firefighter, but always holding multiple jobs because he had a big family to support and he took his responsibilities very, very seriously. So Joe Cooney Sr., rest in peace. Uh, and also just to mention, some of you have mentioned a little concern about the fact that if you watch daily mass, you've been seeing Father Andy every day. And uh, what's the matter? Where are the other priests? Well, uh, Father Anthony had a little bit of surgery, which he's recovering from, he's doing fine. And Father Kevin actually took, for the first time in a long time, a week off and went off to Connecticut to spend time with his sister, which is great. So Father Kevin was on vacation, Father Anthony's recovering, so we thank Father Andy for his selfless giving every single day um, uh, of saying Mass on a daily basis for all of those of you who are watching Mass online. As always, I always mention that you're welcome to join us, aside from this Mass, at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Guest this week is Andrew Keenan Bolger, really good guy, wonderful actor in New York City, who shares a lot of his insight about uh, his family, what it meant to lose his mom when he was just a young teenager, and when he learned about the value of living each day fully and treasuring what you have. Andrew Keenan Bolger, you probably saw him if you saw the play Newsies, either in the movie or on Broadway, great actor. And the next week is Billy Keenan. Billy has a powerful story to tell. He had told it in the book called The Road to Resilience. Um, Billy had a perfectly normal, wonderful life until he had a surfing accident and ended up being quadriplegic. And he has written beautifully about the road back to hope, the road back to healing. And uh, Billy Keenan will be our guest next week. It reminds me very much of a police officer, Stephen McDonald. We learn from people who have been physically broken what they've learned about the spiritual life and how it enhances and uplifts them in times when they most need that help. So Billy Keenan next week. Join us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Santi either by going to YouTube on your computer or just watching or listening to us on the Catholic Channel 129 on Sirius XM. Let's pray. Lord God, your word and your sacrament give us food and give us life. May this gift of your Son Lead us to share his life forever with each person we meet. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, the glory of the 
skies for the 